If you only had one day in law enforcement, you'd know what these scenes are. Shift change. Very familiar. For that matter, so is this. And this. And this. If you wanted, you could take hours looking at different scenes, showing different responsibilities in police work, never repeat yourself, and they'd all look familiar. The job's that different. But one responsibility, one scene, is still relatively rare, and that's this one. Even though you know what it is, small kid on a bike getting a ticket from an officer, you also know it doesn't look that familiar. You don't see that every day on the street. Probably because for many officers, it doesn't look that good either. The whole idea of it can go against your grain. It isn't just that you can almost hear that passing motorist thinking, pick on somebody your own size, or doesn't he have anything else better to do? There's more to it than that. There are the other officers you work with, including supervisors, who think the same thing, and you know it. It doesn't look good. And there's your own memory of having your own bike as a kid, and all that it meant to you, all the things you could make it do. You could go in, under, around, almost anything. Good times. You probably never got a ticket. You sure didn't expect one, because if there were rules, other than just be careful, they didn't apply to you and to your bike. So now, giving a small child a ticket for violating 49 sections of the vehicle code in two blocks, you're looking at her, and you know she was told police officers help people. And here she is, feeling strangely punished in a way that may or may not mean anything to her by a person she doesn't know for something she doesn't understand. Put all this together, all these influences on you, add a few more of your own, and this becomes the familiar scene. He's riding on the wrong side of the street, you go right on by. He makes an illegal left turn in traffic, right on by. Runs a stop sign, right on by. That's the way police responded when you were a kid. And unless you see them nearly causing an accident, that's still pretty much the way it's gonna be today. Unfortunately, as you know, the world's changed a little since you were a kid. In fact, no one knows better than an officer of the law that where there used to be quiet streets, there are cars everywhere, more and more every day. Less room for bikes, less room for air. Then turn around and add more bikes because there are more kids and more people in general preferring bike riding to cars, a bike boom, and the game between bikes and cars starts to get a little dangerous. Primarily because one side, the bikes, one whole section of vehicular traffic is still pretty much allowed to operate outside the law, and they're suffering for it. From June of 1972 to June 73, the city of Santa Barbara under a grant from the Office of Traffic Safety, conducted a study of accidents between bikes and cars. The findings you may have known even before they started. For example, during a four-year period from 69 to 72, automobile accidents resulting in injury or death remained relatively constant, even though there were more and more cars. And yet, during the same period, bike accidents resulting in injury or death didn't increase, they doubled. And since over 90% of the bike riders violate the law, it comes as no surprise that in 70%, 70% of the accidents between bikes and cars, the bike rider was at fault. For the most part, he causes them, he gets hurt. Now what's worse than all this is that the study also showed that children, kids 13 and under, who account for only 8% of the traffic, are involved in almost half of the accidents. Now, statistics are fine. They help make a point. But this is what it looks like. There's no doubt it's getting more familiar. If last year you were called to a scene like this, you can bet this year you'll be called to two. Next year, three. And the next year, four. You're going to have to take a report, determine cause, and you know what you'll find. He was on the wrong side of the street. He made an illegal left turn into traffic. He ran a stop sign, a red light. You talk to kids in schools, give safety tips, and the accidents continue to rise. You put on bike rodeos, explain the laws to everybody, and the accidents continue to rise. Now, obviously, education helps, and everything helps. 
But the study, again, proved what you see every day for yourself, that even after bike riders know the rules of the road, they're going to violate them anyway, because that's the way it's always been. The public in general permits it, and you permit it. Now, as of early in 1974, the city of Santa Barbara, based on the findings of its study, no longer, in good conscience, will permit bike violations for the sole reason that it's directly related to this. And this is unacceptable. It's obvious that just as with pedestrians and cars, enforcement is still the only known effective means to stop accidents. And unless a person really believes there's still no problem, there's no other choice. However, just as bikes are not cars and children are not adults, it's also obvious that any enforcement program has to reflect those differences. In Santa Barbara, being aware that parents, and not you, possess the only real influence over that child, there's a warning card with the most dangerous violations already on it. You make the stop, talk about the violation, circle the one that occurred, drop it at the station, and one copy gets clipped to a letter sent directly to those parents, stating much of what's been stated here, so they can understand in order to help. So that everybody can understand, of course, takes a campaign, news releases, explain what's going to happen and why. Bike rodeos, for sure, for licensing and bike training. Bike safety in schools, for sure. But straight talk at all levels, because even children have a right to know there's a good reason to be a little scared in traffic. 35 miles an hour, that boy died. He broke his neck hitting that pole. For their parents, TV ads and radio spots show clearly what's wrong, how it got this way, and what now has to be done. Public service programming, lectures, group discussions, all explaining not only the facts, but also some of the thoughts of an officer in all this. If it's going to save that youngster's life, maybe that's worth more than a friendship at the time. There are all kinds of reasons why an officer doesn't like giving a child a ticket, just as no one likes getting one. But the world's changed. You know it. The public's getting to know it. And in Santa Barbara, at least, the bike riders are going to know it for their own sake. Unless, of course, the one person who's in a position to do something about accidents decides to go right on by. The ticket. Just as no one likes...